As a maker, you tend to acquire various hammers and mallets as you go along, from the cheap rubber or wooden mallets from your local hardware store, or mallets from people you admire. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make these two hardwood mallets. They're rather pretty, but they do a good job. Stick around. Roll the intro. Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to Sean in the Shed. Okay, so we're making a mallet, possibly two. Um, the reason behind it is we all like to have our own personalised workshop mallets. You know. It's not mine, it says April Wilkerson on it. Um, but it's my go-to mallet at the moment, because it's a dead blow mallet, but it feels nice in my hand as well. It's my go-to, but I want to make my very own. So I'm going to be making a nice hardwood mallet simple techniques so I've got some reclaimed oak door frames I've got some reclaimed tight grain oak um, workshop workbench and I've got some reclaimed walnut flooring so the, the door frames and the flooring are from where my work had a, a refurb recently so thank you for the refurb and then I've got some Paduk or Paduak depending if your name surname ends in Eslay or not uh, so there's going to be some nice highlight detail with the the redness from the Paduk. So I'm going to get on and, and knock this up. Well, I am in a shed, so of course I can do a knock to put my shed production, can't I? And yeah, I've got a hat on because I've got crazy hair at the moment due to lockdown, so one of the first priorities is getting the hair sorted. I don't want to take the razor to it. The beard's getting long enough as it is. Right, let's get cutting. After tidying the stock up on the table saw to ensure all the same width, I cut all the pieces to the same length until I got to the oak. Once it was the right length, I then cut it in half to allow the channel for the mallet handle to fit inside the mallet head. Gluing these up was fairly simple. I marked out where the handle would go on the paduk. I then applied a coat of glue, sandwiched the paduk against the walnut, applied more glue, making sure not to go over the lines where the handle would go, and then placed the oak centerpieces, securing in place with a brad nail. I then sandwiched the two halves of the mallet head together with clamps. When I fit that mallet heads together, one of the things I didn't do is I didn't get the mallet handle ready first. I didn't cut the shoulders into it, so this handle I've prepared would be useless because it just goes straight through the mallet head. So I need to make some new ones. I need to cut the shoulders in first so it fits in and holds itself in place. So, my mistake. But it's given me a chance to have a practice handle and I've cut sort of practice with my rounding over the actual mallet handle itself. I think I've got a feel for what I want, so it's given me a good opportunity. But hey, we all make mistakes. Let's make some proper handles. Thank you. 
making the handles, I squared off both sides of the mallet heads before cutting a 5 degree bevel on both ends. I then took the mallet head over to the belt sander and just squared off each of the sides. Using my trim router and a round over bit, I rounded over the sides of the mallet handle. I hit a natural stop against the shoulders of the handle itself so it gave a nice scalloped end to the actual handle itself. So I, I have my handle, I have my mallet head. I have a small wedge which I'm prepared to sit off camera and I have glue. It's time to get messy and collect them all together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put some masking tape around the actual handle itself to prevent getting glue where I don't want it. Now I'd masked off the handle I applied liberal amounts of glue to allow insertion into the mallet head itself. When you make a mallet, it's always handy to have another mallet to hand. One thing I find fascinating when making mallets and putting handles onto objects is that the way the object travels upwards as you hit down on the handle itself. Here I'm applying the wedge with a, a large amount of glue and giving it a good forceful tap inside prior to leaving to dry. With the other one I made. So there's two. One straight edges, one with curved edges. One mallet handle I burnt with a blowtorch, the other one I left natural before applying boiled linseed oil liberally across both mallets and handles prior to wiping off with a clean rag. That's my two mallets. One is completely rounded on all corners and all sides to make it nice and smooth. One I've left it slightly angular. Um, it's a little bit smaller in size than the other one. There are things I would do differently, but we all say that, don't we, when we make things? Um, it was quite successful, actually. I didn't think it would go as easy as it did, but it, I was quite lucky. I've got more projects coming up. Hit the subscribe button in the top corner, should you wish to. Down the bottom corner, there'll be a playlist from YouTube of other things that I've done in the past, or other people's projects. Stick around, see you next time on Sean the Shed. See you.